Until recently, Area 51 was left out of maps, and the US government completely denied its existence for almost 60 years. But it wasn't until 2013 that the US government finally admitted to the existence of Area 51. The area surrounding the lake is completely off limits to people, as well as air traffic above the facility. Security personnel are under orders to shoot and kill any trespassers. You can't even fly in Area 51's airspace without receiving a court martial. The Area 51 airspace is regarded as one of the most restricted airspaces in the world. Because the purpose of the facility is such a secret, the conspiracy theories that surround it are very compelling. It has become the focus of many modern UFO and conspiracy theories. The most well known conspiracy is that an alien aircraft recovered at Roswell was stored, examined, and reverse engineered at Area 51. It was claimed that bodies belonging to extraterrestrials were recovered at the crash and hidden from the public. This is known as the Roswell incident. In 1947, the Roswell Army Airfield Public Information Officer, Walter Halt, issued a press release that said that a flying disc had been recovered near Roswell, New Mexico. The story on paper is that this was nothing more than a crash of a conventional weather balloon. Conspiracy theories about Roswell didn't pop up until the 1970s. Roswell is one of the most famous conspiracy theories in history, as well as one of the most debunked. In the 1990s, the US military released two reports that detailed what really happened at Roswell. The crash involved a nuclear test surveillance balloon. Despite that, the mystery of Roswell continues to spark the interest of UFO enthusiasts. One of Area 51's employees gave a testimony when he was nearly on his deathbed about his experience at Area 51, and he claims that the Roswell incident was real and that there were actual aliens who survived. He also said the CIA interviewed gray aliens, which he claims he saw with his own eyes. But the UFO conspiracy theories aren't the only explanation for Area 51's purpose. One of the main reasons for the many UFO sightings around Area 51 is the facilities where the American government tests experimental weapons and aircraft. Recently declassified documents from the 1960s into the 70s focus on the quest to develop stealth capability in aircraft. Area 51 was created in 1955 for one specific reason, to test a top secret aircraft project, codename Aquatone. Aquatone is the Cold War codename for an aircraft called the U-2, also known as the Dragon Lady. The Cold War was when tensions were high between the US and Soviet Russia, so the U-2 was developed to spy on them. Nikita Khrushchev was very public about his country's nuclear program, so it's only natural for the US government to want to keep an eye on them. The U-2 spy plane was virtually undetectable because it flew outside the range of Soviet air defenses at 70,000 feet. The plane carried photo imaging equipment that the US government used to find out what the Soviets were up to. Project Oxcart was another CIA operation that was top secret for decades. As far as the public was concerned, it didn't exist. To this day, we still don't know the full extent of Project Oxcart, but what we do know is that it was another spy plane called the A-12, designed to fly at 90,000 feet. The A-12 flies faster than a speeding bullet, which was so fast that it had to be made out of titanium to withstand the immense heat. Interestingly, the Soviets unknowingly sold the US the titanium needed to build the plane that was intended to spy on them. Project Oxcart was what turned Area 51 into a permanent facility. Another document that was recently declassified is a report about the exploitation of a covertly acquired Soviet fighter jet. Engineers at Area 51 examined the aircraft to find out their weaknesses, which would become useful in combat. When we review the history of the government programs that involve secret aircraft, what we learn is that there have been aerial vehicles employed over the years that were both highly advanced for their day and were also kept secret from the public. These were from the 1960s and 70s. Who knows what kind of top secret operations and aircraft are being developed at the facility now. So what is the US government hiding at Area 51? We know for sure they hide weapons and experimental aircraft, but that could be a very small part of a bigger picture. Much of the airbase's facilities are underground. Some claim that beneath Area 51 there's a transcontinental underground railroad system. Perhaps we'll never know what the US government is hiding at Area 51. All we can do is keep asking questions. So what if we all stormed Area 51? That is the question we are asking right now. I think all of us have wondered what the US government is hiding at Area 51, the top secret US Air Force military base. Area 51 is located in southern Nevada in the western United States. According to the CIA, the correct names for the facility are Homey Airport and Groom Lake. Area 51 was the name used in a classified CIA document from the Vietnam War, so that is the name it is most commonly referred to as. The base's current purpose is publicly unknown. It's used as a US Air Force open training range and likely supports the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapons. The purpose of Area 51 remained classified and was only formally recognized as a military base in 2013 after a 2005 Freedom of Information Act request. To this day, the base is patrolled by armed security and motion 
uncensored CCTV cameras. Signs around the base warn that officers are trained to treat intruders with deadly force. Alien enthusiasts have long believed that Area 51 is a site where the US government holds secret information, as well as captured UFO technology and alien specimens. Most strongly believe that Area 51 is where the US government took and housed the UFO from the Roswell crash in 1947. People in the area have reported seeing strange alien occurrences and UFO sightings. In case you're wondering, the US military has officially responded to the plan to storm Area 51. Air Force spokesperson Laura McAndrews released a warning to potential trespassers. Passers. She said in a statement, Area 51 is an open training range for the US Air Force, and we would discourage anyone from trying to come into the area where we train American armed forces. They added, the US Air Force always stands ready to protect America and its assets. Whatever that means. The spokesperson did not clarify on what the US military would be prepared to do if a million people stormed the grounds of Area 51. Although officers are under the instruction to shoot and kill intruders, it's highly unlikely that they would exercise force on such a large group of people should they choose to storm the grounds of the airbase. So if you're picturing a humongous massacre on September 20th, it's probably not going to happen that way. Because the US government knows that more than a million people are planning to storm Area 51, even if the grounds were hiding alien specimens and technology, it sure as hell wouldn't be there on September 20th when all these people plan to storm the base. September 20th is still a couple of months away. That's plenty of time for the US military to take precautions. It wouldn't take that long to set up an electric fence to keep intruders out. And maybe there's even the chance that they would just let everyone storm the base, but not before moving any top secret information, aircraft, or supposed alien specimens. By the time the storming of Area 51 took place, all that would be left is a bunch of empty buildings. Let's be realistic for a second. If the US government was hiding aliens and alien technologies it had captured, it wouldn't be keeping it contained at an airbase everyone is familiar with. This is the US government we're talking about. They probably have secret bases all over America and the world. Anything they wanted to keep a secret, they would be able to move to a different facility before the planned storming of Area 51. There's actually another US airbase in Ohio that is rumored to hide living and dead aliens from the Roswell UFO crash in a system of tunnels. Officially, the craft from the Roswell crash was a weather balloon, and this explanation was accepted by the public until the late 70s when military personnel began to speak out. Back in 2012, a retired CIA agent spoke out on the 65th anniversary of the Roswell incident and revealed that the CIA found a UFO at the site. But again, the US government probably isn't keeping that UFO at Area 51. What? If Area 51 was attacked. So, some context to this question. In July 2019, three Facebook users created an event called Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. The event is scheduled for Friday, September 20th at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The description reads We will all meet up at the Area 51 Alien Center tourist attraction and coordinate our entry. If we Naruto run, we can move faster than their bullets. Let's see them aliens. Let's see them indeed. The event, as of the time of recording this video, has 1.3 million people set to attend, with a further million interested. The event now also has a website attached, stormarea51.us. The site has official merch and is telling us to stay tuned for a special announcement. I wonder what it could be. The ingenious tagline is once again, let's see them aliens, and shall we? Beyond that, the whole social coup has gained so much attention and traction that now Lil Nas. X has said that he will perform for free at the storming party, so I guess it seems like it's on, and will he be taking the mob down the old town road with his battle cries? I guess we'll get to that. So we don't know when Area 51 was officially established because, you know, classified and all that, but we think it was circa 1947. The facility is highly protected and has been mentioned in the same breath as the word alien on countless occasions, not least because of the Roswell incident of 1947, which is a strange founding year coincidence, is it not? A number of alleged former employees of the facility have claimed that there were aliens or greys housed there, as well as flying saucers and other alien technology. Publicly, Bob Lazar has claimed to be a physicist who worked on reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology at the facility. He also claims that the facility has documents describing the historical involvement of Earth and extraterrestrials for the past 10,000 years. Others have claimed that the space has been involved in the development of nuclear weapons and some wilder conspiracies, if it can get wilder than aliens, say that the government is testing time travel there and genetically engineering children. Conversely, the government claimed that the facility is 
is a test base for the United States military air force, although they don't go into detail. In fact, the United States government has only acknowledged the existence of the facility for 6 years. Prior to that, they denied it. Either way, they clearly do not want people in the space for reasons unknown. An Air Force spokesperson has responded to the current situation by saying, The United States Air Force is aware of the Facebook event encouraging people to storm Area 51. The Nevada Test and Training Range provides flexible, realistic and multi-dimensional battle space to test and develop tactics as well as conduct advanced training in support of the United States national interests. Any attempt to illegally access the area is highly discouraged. Ho ho ho. Highly discouraged. I feel like that's probably the understatement of the decade. A quick google of Area 51 will show you some serious signposts with some serious warnings like warning photography of this area is prohibited, warning this is a military institution, warning deadly force authorized. Section 1382 of Title 18 of the United States Criminal Justice Law forbids trespassing on military and naval bases. In fact, punishment is enforceable even if a person simply intends to trespass. So, you know, the people saying that they're going to storm the area. Persons violating this section of the law are subject to 6 months imprisonment or a $500 fine or both. Could the penal system really deal with putting 2 million people in jail? No, no it can't. But raising a billion dollars off would be trespassers isn't a bad exchange, is it? Although the admin involved in processing that many fines would be an utter headache. But what about the whole deadly force authorised issue? We all know that America shoots to kill when it has to. It seems in January 2019, United States military personnel shot and killed a man who failed to stop at a security gate in the Nevada National Security Site, in which Area 51 is enclosed. In 2016, a group of BBC journalists were held at gunpoint as they approached Area 51. Now, they did get away with a fine, but had they not had the credentials, what would have happened to them? There are a lot of memes about the Area 51 storm, and I've had a good chuckle, but at what point would storming the facility become very, very unfunny. If the September 20th storm went ahead, then I imagine police and military personnel would have the foresight to try and stop the people travelling to the area. The tourist centre, for example, would be on lockdown and the roads surrounding the facility would be heavily guarded. If the military doesn't want you to see something and it knows that you're coming, it's going to stop you. But can it stop 2 million people? If everyone turned up who said they're attending or is interested, could the United States actually halt the storm? Well the answer is, as the most powerful military force in the world, sure it could stop people, but what would that actually entail? Would the United States shoot down its own civilians? Would it bomb them? Would it use chemicals to keep the crowd away? And what implications would that have on the longevity of the country and the support for the government? And also, didn't Elon Musk, one of the richest people in the scientific world, didn't he tweet saying he'd provide flamethrowers to those people storming the facility? Like, is this legitimately going to turn into a civil war? If Area 51 was attacked by an external source like say in an act of terrorism or another country or something along those lines, the military wouldn't think twice about opening fire and protecting their assets and then using full force of punishment and retaliation. But does this apply to its citizens? Does not 2 million people, whether in jest or not, banding together to say that they want answers kind of suggest that actually maybe this whole knowledge is power but knowledge is secret model of government might actually be wearing a little thin. Does the government have a right to keep what is happening at Area 51 a secret from their own people? Aren't governments supposed to work for the people? Well, at this point, even if it started as a joke, I think it's clear to see that people want more information. Seriously and realistically, I don't think that anyone is about to storm Area 51. If they did, well would they really be able to Naruto run faster than bullets? No, I don't think they would. Would there really be flamethrowers? Would it turn into a massacre? And what for? If it does happen then it will be the first mass scale civil unrest in the United States since, well, the United States if there really are 2 million people involved. If the chaos of the 1967 Detroit riots are anything to go by then, this absolutely wouldn't be pretty and the death toll would be high. So what if Area 51 was attacked? We know what could happen, but the United States government, Donald Trump's government, hasn't ever been tested like this yet. So who is to know what would happen? 
one. If it did, well, the 20th of September 2019 would be one for the history books. But again, what would we find? Luckily, there's another big answer on that topic. What is the government hiding in Area 51? Blimey, what a question. Area 51 is a government base in Lincoln County, Nevada. It is very much in the middle of nowhere and has existed since at least the 1940s, although I can't tell you exactly when the site became operational because we simply don't know. The site became well known in the late 1940s and 50s following the Roswell crash at the height of UFO fever. The government only officially acknowledged its existence in 2013, but will not give details as to what happens within its walls. Recently in July 2019, it seemed as if the people had had enough of the government's secrecy and decided that they wanted answers. Albeit set up as a joke, the Facebook event emerged calling for people to meet up at Area 51 Alien Center tourist attraction and then storm the restricted space saying, we can move faster than their bullets, let's see them aliens. Let's see them aliens indeed. The event is scheduled for September the 20th, 2019 with 1 million people already attending and 920,000 interested. So quite the crew. I guess that's one way to finally solve the mystery, hey? But like, honestly, what is the government hiding there? Oof, if I knew that, there really wouldn't be any need to storm the place, would there? So let me talk you through a few of the more enduring theories. The CIA only confirmed existence of Area 51 in 2013 when old documents were declassified by the Obama administration. However, they have never acknowledged alien rumors. The official party line is that the space is an open training range for the US Air Force. Mm. Hmm. In its time, Area 51 has been pegged as the filming location for a fake moon landing. So perhaps Area 51 is a huge Hollywood style set where all of our astronauts go to fake space. Although I don't personally subscribe to that narrative. I think the moon landing was real. Hooray for the moon. Happy 50th anniversary moon landing. Or Area 51 landing? Questions. More likely though is that people could find remnants of nukes and other weapons. A popular theory is that Area 51 is a possible location for secret nuclear tests. A lot of people believe that the US government carelessly tested nuclear weapons around Area 51 back in the 1940s and 50s, with some people claiming to have spotted them on Google. Investigative journalist Annie Jacobson has claimed that Area 51 was the home to a nuclear program called Project 57. She claims that alpha admitting material, so nuclear waste was buried in the ground, but has been spread by earthworms who polluted the Nevada soil with plutonium. Wild. Others think that the site is ongoing with its nuclear involvement even today, and that it is one of the locations used to store nukes in America. Other conspiracists say that Area 51 is developing energy weapons, which I guess is similar to nuclear weapons. Some say it's the home of a one world government order or an Illuminati HQ. Others say Area 51 is developing weather control equipment or even time travel. Others say that we are likely to find genetically engineered children at Area 51, which I suppose is kind of an offshoot of the major theory, which of course is aliens. It is said that employees swear a lifetime oath of silence, which must mean that there is something going on, right? Well in 2013, a dying former employee of Area 51 claimed to have worked at the facility in 1950 and said that he wanted to speak his truth truth in case he had an operation that was going to fail. He wanted to share his thoughts before he died. Have a quick listen. Boy, I couldn't tell anybody. In fact, I, I had to take a vow that I wouldn't tell anybody. A lot of it for 40 years. He claimed that there was a secret project called Project Blue Book and that his employers confirmed that the facility did indeed house aliens. The man didn't give his name in the interview out of fear for his family, but he does sound pretty convinced. Also convinced is physicist Robert Scott Lazar, who claims to have worked at reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology at Area 51. Not only does he claim that the government is hiding so called grey aliens, greys being a term used frequently by anonymous sources talking about the building. He also claimed that the government is keeping UFOs, which he was studying. It is believed by many that the government scooped up the Roswell wreckage, which was then kept under lock and key at Area 51. Even though he is adamant that there are alien secrets to be discovered at the base, Mr. Lazar has discouraged people from storming the test site for fear out of their safety, a sentiment echoed by the Air Force themselves. Air 
Air Force spokesperson Laura McAndrews told the Washington Post that they are prepared to stop any threat to Area 51 at all costs. She said, The United States Air Force always stands ready to protect its assets and would discourage anyone from trying to come into the area where we train American armed forces. So, again, the official line is that Area 51 is a test site for aircraft and weaponry. The space is one of the most secretive and classified in the United States, so I, a British girl living in Canada, absolutely can't give you the answer you're looking for. Perhaps on the 20th of September we'll find out if people do indeed storm the base. But then, that is pretty unadvisable, because despite the Facebook post suggestion that people can run faster than bullets, they actually can't. But I have to ask, would the government really shoot down a million people, or two million people, or three million people, or the entire population of America if they turned up, just to protect whatever is behind the barbed wire fences? Whatever it is, it must be pretty important. Thank you